Hi guys, Kaylee Gonzalez here with MLC CAD Systems and welcome to the last video of the CSWA video series where we have been going through the CSWA sample exam. This video is going to cover the last two questions in that exam, which is question seven and eight. Both of these are in regards to assembly modeling. So if you've been following me through the whole video series, you should already have the PDF downloaded as well as the required files. I will show you where this is at in just a moment if you don't have it downloaded already. But before I do that, I'm going to go over some of these questions. So this is question seven from the sample exam. So this is giving us information on how to proceed with this assembly. So of course we do want to download the zip file. Once we have those parts, we want to open those parts inside of SOLIDWORKS. And they're actually giving us a heads up that we may see a specific question regarding feature recognition. We're going to say no to that if we do see it. Um, the reason why is because we're not changing any of the actual part or component dimensions. We're just going to put the assembly together. The third bullet point, create the assembly with respect to the origin as shown in the isometric view. This is important for calculating the proper center of mass. So we want to make sure that we do compensate for that. And I'll show you an easy way that we can line those axes up. And then we have the following conditions. So pins are mated concentric to the chain link holes, and there is going to be no clearance. These should fit perfectly together. Then the pin end faces are coincident to the chain link side faces. So that's actually referring to the flat side of the pin and the side of the chain link. Again, we're going to be working in millimeters, two decimal places. Unlike the modeling portion, the assembly origin is going to matter in this situation. And of course, we have A, B, and C. In this case, it is looking at the particular angle mates that we are going to be adding to our assembly. Now I will show you how we can use equations for mates. It's not as direct as it was inside of the modeling environment, but it is something we can do, especially to speed up the update in, in preceding questions. So as I mentioned, I'm going to pull up the web page so you guys can see a visual of where the sample exam is located and where those files are. So here on my screen, you can see the actual web page. This is where I downloaded the sample exam right from within the middle of the screen. That link will automatically download a zip file and you can see the actual URL at the top. So this is where I got the actual physical files from. Once that zip file is downloaded, make sure you extract that zip file and you will have the following items. Now you won't see the folder at the very top. Those were the part models that I did for the modeling section, but you will see the chain link part file, the long pin and the short pin, as well as the PDF. So what I'm going to do to get started inside of SOLIDWORKS is I'm just going to open all of these individual part files. That way they're going to be open and when we go to insert them, um, we're not going to have to browse for them again. So I just used a control click to choose all three of them. And if I right click, I can then say open. So this is going to proceed to open all of these items in SOLIDWORKS. And as we predicted, we're getting this particular prompt about feature recognition. I'm going to say no, and it's going to ask me this um, probably for every single component. And the reason why is these are imported bodies. And so I'm going to click no through all three of those. And we should have all three of our items already open. So I'm going to have my long pin, my short pin, and then my actual chain links. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and go under my new icon and say make assembly from part slash assembly. And again, this is going to prompt me for my template. Whichever template you use, Please make sure that it is using millimeters. If it's not, your actual mass properties are, and center of mass in this situation is going to be off. 
So what I recommend that you do is notice that when I move my cursor immediately over my assembly origin, I get a different icon next to my cursor. That's the icon that you want to see that's going to match up the XYZ coordinates with that of the assembly and line up that origin. So here, if I view this in an isometric view, we can see that it does correlate with the X, Y, and Z location that was inside of my PDF. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and start adding in my four chain link. So I'm going to go under Insert Component, and I'm going to click on this little push pin. And then if you click Chain Link, what this allows you to do is you can enter four components at the same time. So again, this is something that's nice to know about because it'll just save you time from having to go to insert components with every individual item. I'm going to go ahead and open up my mate feature. I'm going to go ahead and leave this open throughout most of this particular example. Um, I do like using shortcuts, but I often find that if I have mates that flip on me, I need to reopen this property manager anyway, so I'm just going to leave it open. So from here, I'm going to start creating some of my mates. So I'm going to start with my concentric mate and again, following the instructions that they've provided. Now, one thing that I am going to do is right now we can actually see that this can rotate. We really don't want it to be able to do that because as we make additional mates on top of this, you're going to run into more instances of mates flipping on you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the front plane of my assembly and one of these internal faces, it doesn't matter which one, and I'm just going to say I want those to be parallel. What that does is it makes it so that that component now cannot rotate about that pin. And again, that could have a significant impact on any errors that pop up inside of your assembly. So from here, a lot of the mates are actually going to be quite repetitive. So I'm going to do the concentric mate there. Uh, another reason why I like to have my mate property manager open is because I like to right click on specific items and say select other. What that does is it temporarily hides the face that my cursor was over so that I can select faces that are behind it. So in this way, I find it to be just really convenient when creating these mates. I don't have to be constantly rotating my, my part around. Now here, this angle mate is going to be 25, and this is one situation that you will run into where we might have to work with these mate alignments and the flip alignment in order for that to be, to be set up properly. So I'm going to follow the same workflow. And again, from here, choose my individual faces. I'm going to right click and say select other. And I am choosing faces for my angle mates. Now inside of the drawing that they have provided us, it actually makes it look like they're going from edges. If you can choose faces when working with mates and assemblies, I encourage you to do so. The reason why is because it does decrease how much mates can flip on you. So I am going to be diligent about that and use faces for mates instead of using those edges whenever I can. So I'm going to connect those and then choose my last remaining faces, which is again going to be an angle mate, and this is 130. So as you can see right now, I'm adding these particular mates. I'm not linking them to an equation yet. I'll show you that at the end. Um, again, it's not as straightforward in an assembly as it is in a part environment, um, but I will cover that. Again, I'm going to use my push pin. This will allow me to insert three pins at the same time. And again, from here, we're going to run into some repetitive mates. Um, another alternative that you could have as opposed to bringing all of these individual items in is 
you could use copy with mates. That's a separate feature. Um, the only reason why I'm not using that is because I'm trying to stay within the functionality that you would have based on um, a regular SolidWorks Essentials class. And I know that I typically don't cover that in a class. So I'm just sticking to functionality that I know everyone would have. But the copy with mates would also allow you to streamline this a little bit. Um, as a side note, you can hold down control and then hold down your left mouse button and move an instance of a component off of another existing instance. I use that quite frequently, again, so I don't have to go under insert component and browse for a lot of items. And then here I'm using my shortcut. So once I have my assembly actually put together, I'm going to go under my Evaluate tab, and I'm going to go under Mass Properties. And what we're looking at here is the center of mass. And what we're actually seeing is that the center of mass is exactly the same as what I have in letter A of the multiple choice that I was presented. And that is actually the correct answer. So we know at this point that we have put everything together properly. I'm going to close my mass property. So that was actually question number seven. Um, I'm going to bring up the question for question number eight, and then we're going to proceed with that because it's going to build off of this last item. So this is what we're going to be doing in question number eight. So we want to modify the assembly that we just created, and we're going to use the same assembly. We're not going to change any of the existing mates, but we do want to change the values for A, B, and C, and those are all of our angled mates. So this is where I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can go in and change these. Now, being a sample exam, this is the last question, but you may have additional modifications to make on the actual exam. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to show you the equations as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my equations dialog box. So the equations dialog box is going to look the same as it did inside of the part environment. And I'm going to add the information for question 8. So A will be 30, B is going to be 115, and then C will be 135. Once that has been added, we want to uh, change our mates and potentially apply those global variables. A couple ways that we can do this. If I expand my mate icon, I can always right click on my angle mate and say edit feature. Notice how inside of the mate environment, if I click equals, I do not get the drop down list for a global variable. It's something that's not included in the mate dialog box. So here I could either change the value manually to be 30, that's one way that you could go through and make the changes to these different mates. What we can also do, if I go under my assembly tab, you want to make sure that this instant 3D is going to be on for this. And if I click on the angle mate, so it's highlighted in blue, I'm going to see the physical number appear on the screen. And I can click on that value and say equals, and then drive this to global variable A. That's another way that we can do that. So that might potentially be a little bit faster. Just really depends on what you want to do. So again, here I can go to global variable B, which is going to be that 115 value, and then go to my last angle mate, double click on the value, and drive that to C. So this would be a way that you could use global variables. If you look over on the left side of my screen under my mates tab, I see several items as far as the stop and go light. That means I just have to rebuild. That's because I added those mates in. So once I rebuild my assembly, I'm going to go back into my evaluate tab and take a look at my mass property. And what we can see here is that my center of mass that we're looking at is identical to what is inside the answer key. So we are able to utilize equations even on the assembly level 
to make some of these faster, quick changes. So that's one way that you can approach creating these assemblies. You can do it either manual. You can use equations if you're comfortable doing that. Either way, I think the timing is going to be about the same and you'll get the right answer either way. So there's several ways we could go about with the assembly. I showed you using basic features, but you could also use items like copy with mates. That would be another way to streamline a lot of this information. So thank you very much for walking through the CSWA sample exam with me. I hope that this will be beneficial for you in preparing for these exams. Um, thank you very much and have a great day.